Hi everyone, let's talk about YAML. If you work as a DevOps or platform engineer, you probably have a love-hate relationship with YAML. At one hand, it's an amazing data structure, easily readable, and most of the modern cloud infrastructure expresses their configuration in YAML. Well, it's not that great if you have to write YAML or modify it or in another way, wrangle lots of YAML. So today I want to show you how to make this easier. We will look at working with YAML in NeoVim. So let's jump in. First things first, if you're not familiar with NeoVim, it is like Vim, but more modern, uh, and it has a few distinctive features. For example, it uses Lua instead of Vim script. It also comes with pre-built uh, LSP and other goodies. But for all intents and purposes, it's like Vim. So it has the model editing capabilities and all that comes with it. So why not other editors? Why not VS Code? Why not other ones? Uh, Vim has a few advantages. First of all, uh, it integrates with the terminal really well. It is faster. It's very highly customizable. Um, you can essentially change everything and anything. And also, not new Vim, but Vim comes mostly pre-installed um, on various virtual machines with Linux. We're going to be looking at new Vim, but most of what I'll be showing you, it's also possible with Vim. So before we jump into settings themselves, there are two things I would like you to set up. First, export the editor variable, add it to your bash or zshell rc and set its value to nvim. What it will do, it will essentially open various files in NeoVim uh, whenever your uh, terminal reads this variable. It will see it and will open it in NeoVim. Likewise for Git, you can set the core editor setting to NeoVim. For example, if you make a commit from command line and you're editing it, it will open NeoVim. So if you don't have NeoVim installed yet, I highly recommend using the Kickstarter repository uh, from TJ DeVries. He's a core NeoVim maintainer and also has a really cool YouTube channel. I will leave the link in the video description. Uh, we're not going to go in detail through this. Uh, it's just something I want to recommend uh, as a very good starting point for your NeoVim configuration. It has this init Lua file and it explains it really well, what's what, uh, what every setting uh, does, and uh, it provides you with a lot of same defaults. So this out of the way, let's jump in into the config. So we are going to look at my configuration, and then we are going to see how it works with actual file. So first of all, where is this file located? This is actually important. If you look at the at the top of the screen here, you see the path that is .config slash nvim slash ft plugin. This is a special folder that you can use to put all kinds of file specific configurations. You can see I have yaml.lua, uh, which obviously holds configuration for YAML. All right, basic settings. Those settings essentially make it so that YAML file uses spaces, not tabs, to indent. Uh, it uses two spaces for indenting new um, lines uh, if they need to be indented. And if you use tab inside uh, the file, it will actually convert it to spaces. So. Uh, very nice settings. Uh, those are also possible in Vim, so something that you can you can try. Uh, now some buffer specific key maps. Uh, buffer, if you don't know, it's like a workplace that you see in NeoVim. So currently we are in a buffer, and the buffer is our file that we see loaded in NeoVim window. Uh, so this is just a normal key binding. It says leader, which is in my case space, YT would pull out a YAML telescope uh, extension. Uh, I highly recommend installing telescope, um, which is like a fuzzy finder for various things. We will see how to use it in a moment. Uh, another uh, key binding I have is uh, little YL um, for YAML lint. 
and this is using an external program. So exclamation mark um, talks uh, is actually denoting using the external CLI, and then percent sign stands for the file. Uh, if you're interested in how to use external commands with uh, Vim or NeoVim, uh, I will um, leave the link, and also the link to the video should be somewhere on the top. All right, so those are helper so helper key bindings. Now, another important part is folding. Uh, since YAML is indentation-based, you want to use a folding method of indent, uh, meaning that uh, you will see this in the file. Whenever we use indent, uh, YAML file will actually collapse and give us folds. And this is a really nice way of working with big YAML files, where you can kind of laser focus on the part that you want to work with uh, and then um, ignore the others. Here, uh, I mentioned earlier that NeoVim is highly extensible. This is my own function I wrote uh, that helps me to navigate through folds. If I have multiple folds, then I can use ZJ and ZK to jump up and down between folds. All right. One more thing is LSP configuration. Uh, LSP is language server protocol that comes pre-built in NeoVim. And uh, we can use various uh, servers, various implementations. Um, for um, this purpose, we are using YAML LSP. And we are actually here specifying for the YAML LS uh, language server, we're specifying YAML schemas. What it will do, it will give us a essentially schema validation for our file. So you see here, I have a schema for Kubernetes files. They come from a separate repository. Uh, and then if a file starts with ks dash whatever else dot yaml, then this uh, schema validation will be activated and we will see um, how it works in action. And likewise, we have here other um, other schemas coming from schema store. So GitHub works off. I will also show you how it, how it works very quick. But depending on the file type, you can bring on the schema validation, which is super powerful. Uh, so you can actually have various versions of schemas and so on. There are plugins that expand this functionality and make it a little bit more ubiquitous. But for my purposes, uh, I am perfectly happy with using this uh, main setup. And last but not least, um, auto-completion. Auto-completion engine uh, called CMP. Uh, it is a NeoVim plugin. Um, it's a little bit difficult to set up, but there are plenty of great videos showing you how to do it. What it essentially says is the order of auto-completion that will appear in my uh, in my YAML file. So first, we will have auto-completion for snippets, if I have any. And then you will see here the NVIM LSP. And this is important because this will help us if we want to, for whatever reason, manually edit the file, it will actually give us an intelligence-like um, experience and auto-completion inside the file. All right, so we have um, seen the configuration, and now let's focus on the file itself. So here we have file that is the normal Kubernetes job. Um, Nothing exciting here, just a small YAML for the demo purposes, but you could imagine having a lot of those. So first we said that we want to try folding. So for folding, I can use the shortcut ZI, which gives me a default fold on the, on the level one folding. And it's already nicer. I can see that the uh, spec selector and, and template are all folded. Um, and then I can just jump through those. I can increase folding level to do uh, ZM to fold more. Uh, now I have on the on the zero level folding, so metadata and spec, all the lines are folded. And as I mentioned earlier, I have those functions which I can jump. So ZJ will take me to the next fold, and ZK will take me to the previous fold. I can do ZR to decrease the folding level to unhide some folds. And I can, for example, do Z capital A to unfold only a certain part. So this is really useful, kind of to move around the file, see what's happening. Um, and if the file is big, I can I can also copy the whole folds, which is really useful. So I can copy this fold 
and for example i can just you know go here and paste it. it it will essentially paste the whole fold which in this case makes the file incorrect but it works so let me show you how to use external linter i'll delete this line that is a starter line for yaml file let's save it and now if i do space which is my um, leader then y and then l we have for yaml lint and you can see at the bottom here it's a warning saying that we have we are missing the start line for the document it's an error it's a warning so it's an external command line tool that i can use to lint my file so let's bring this back and the next shortcut i had was to show uh, essentially the whole file in telescope so i can do again y like Y, and you can see T stands for the telescope. So you can see here, if it would be bigger file, we would have essentially a file name, then we have a line uh, and a column. And if we want to move, for example, to containers, I can just choose whatever, uh, you know, whatever container, and I'm going to jump to containers. So it's really easily how we can how we can do it. One important setting that you maybe don't see quite well because of my color scheme, but let me change it. You can see this vertical line. This vertical line is really useful because what it helps me do is I can exactly see um, on which level I am. So if I want to add something on the same level as the selector, let's say, the line six right here, uh, this vertical line helps me to place it really well. Let me change this color scheme back. Okay, so that was the overview. We did folding. We've seen how to validate file. But now, since this file's name, as you can see on the top here, is KTS minus, it should actually work with Kubernetes validation. So let's see. Let's say that I change the kind here to something that doesn't exist. And when I save the file, you can see that there's an error here. And when I use... Um, here my um, trouble, you collapse this, I can see value is not accepted, values, valid values is job. So it really helps me to understand what's happening, where, where, where did I screw up, where did I, um, where did I make an error here. So I can just change it and then everything goes back. All right, so let's hide the trouble for now. Trouble is just like a plugin that shows all the errors. Uh, it's quite handy. Now, we also said that we have LSP, right? So if I go, let's say here, and I want to add maybe a new configuration for the Kubernetes job. So I can hit O for a new line. And when I hit Control Space, it shows me all the possible completions. So you can see at the top here, I have an LSP auto completion, which comes from the LSP and that reads the schema of Kubernetes manifest and says what I can put here. So the valid values are suspend, completion mode, and so on. So let's imagine that I want to go to completion mode. And when I tab it, you can see on the right hand side, I have a help. And it says I can have a value of non-indexed or indexed. Same for manual selector. It explains what I can do with it, um, which is, again, quite handy. So let's imagine that we go back to completion mode. And then we're going to do this index plus a default value. So far, we've seen how we can edit the file in place, how we can validate it through an external um, CLI, um, YAML lint, how we can also internally validate it. A few more interesting things that we can do with it. Let's say that I want to uh, copy only the metadata. If I do control space in my um, configuration, I am using three seater objects and control space progressively expands to an object and to an object that encompasses it. It's a little uh, confusing maybe, but it's something that it's very useful where you are anywhere in the method or in our case in YAML file, and we can copy it. So if I copy it and let's say I want to go uh, here and I want to paste it, but I want to paste it in a way that it pastes from the same line. So from the same column rather. So from this column, I have a shortcut for it, which I do control P, it kind of pastes the whole uh, structure. So it didn't shift it through the line, but it just pasted it uh, accordingly, which is quite useful when you paste um, values to YAML file, and then you want to paste it from uh, the exact place. You can also do this uh, in the 
in the insert mode uh, by doing this like that so you can see it inserted immediately uh, here those values so that's all what i wanted to show you um, for the specific file let's go back real quick to the presentation um, so important points to take out from this the indent based folding for yaml is very helpful to see the big yaml files this guideline that you've seen um, vertical bar helps us kind of understand where we are in yaml file and what we can do and then lsp integration is really useful to uh, avoid mistakes um, for when editing yaml um, that was just an introduction uh, you of course uh, should check neovim docs uh, a good source of Information is also the Reddit, NeoVim subreddit, uh, or a GitHub repository. I have also a few videos um, about uh, NeoVim. Uh, I will link it in the video description, and just you should see them on the top of the video. Um, so that's it. Um, now you will be able to work with YAML easier and hopefully in a less painful way. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.